This video is about low-pass active filters. It corresponds to section 24.2 of the Applied Analog Electronics textbook. Any active filter is going to have an amplifier. And we will have an input resistor and a feedback impedance. The feedback impedance in this case is a resistor and capacitor in parallel. So we have an input resistor, a feedback resistor RF, and a feedback capacitor CF. The two inputs get hooked up to VN, the input voltage, and to VREF, the refer constant reference voltage. And there's two ways to hook it up. You can hook it up as a non-inverting configuration, where the input goes into the positive input, and so we have a, effectively the infinite input impedance for our amplifier. Um, or we can hook VREF up to that input and V in to the resistor, which would give us an input impedance of RI, uh, much lower than the infinite in input impedance, but would allow us to have a gain that goes down to zero. In the non-inverting configuration, where the input is going directly into the amplifier, our minimum gain is one. And so we can never eliminate any frequency. We often do want to eliminate frequencies. And so the more common configuration is to put the input into the negative input and the reference voltage into the positive input. The gain then is minus the feedback impedance divided by the input impedance. And we can work that out for this with the RF and CF in parallel. That'd be 1 over 1 over RF plus J omega CF. And that's got RI on the bottom and OI. We need to put the minus sign in here. That looks like a bit of a mess, but we can simplify it by multiplying top and bottom by RF and then uh, just doing simple algebra to, sim to get this stuff together, we will get minus RF over RI times 1 over 1 plus J omega RF CF. Okay, so that's our gain equation. Um, we should take a look at what it does at low frequencies and at high frequencies. When omega goes to zero, this J omega RF CF disappears. Um, and we just have minus RF over RI. And that's what we would expect at very low frequencies. The capacitor becomes essentially an infinite impedance. And we just have a standard RF over RI uh, gain, minus RF over RI gain from the negative feedback amplifier. At very high frequencies, the one plus here no longer matters much. And we get this minus RF or RI times 1 over J omega times this time constant RFCF. And so um, what that's going to do is it's going to be something that drops with frequency at a rate of one decade per decade. So we're going to get a low pass filter. It's going to look something like this, where the gain at low frequencies is RF over RI. And put the minus sign on that because it's behaving almost like a real gain at that point. And then the drop here is the slope of minus one, one decade per decade. And what will it be? Um, well, if we just do the simplification here, it's going to be um, uh, one over RICF times j omega. It doesn't look very nice to do it that way, but I don't know whether you can think of it is just where does that hit the corner frequency here? And that's just going to be where omega times RFCF is equal to 1. So omega equals RF 1 over RFCF, or F equals 1 over 2 pi RFCF. So there's our corner frequency. 
there's our passband gain. And that's basically all there really is to doing a simple low pass filter this way. Let's actually design one now. Let's design one with, say we want 30 hertz as our corner frequency. And let's say we want a pass band gain mm, somewhere in the hundreds. So not a huge gain, but not a tiny gain either. Um, we don't have to worry about a large gain in the pass band causing us trouble with gain bandwidth product because we're not getting up to high frequencies with that large gain. All right, so how do we get 30 hertz? Well, we need to make the RFCF time constant be appropriate for 30 hertz. Let's get out a calculator. Um, and 30 hertz times 2 pi. And then um, invert that to get the RC time constant, and I get 5.3 milliseconds. Okay, so RFCF is about 5.305 milliseconds. Now we've got we can pick R and C separately because we wanted a pretty big gain. We're going to need a pretty large value for RF because it's got to be the deal bigger than RI. Um, CF will have to be then pretty small. I'm going to pick an arbitrary value and see if it works. We may have to adjust it. Let's try um, CF is 10 nanofarads. All right, so if we take this time constant and divide it by um, 10 nanofarads, we'll get 530 kilo ohms. Now, 530 doesn't sound like a standard value, but I think 560 might be. So if we make this 560 kilo ohms, um, then if we wanted a gain of a couple hundred, we can pick RI to be, you know, divide that by 560 divided by, let's say, 200. We get about 280. What do we have in that range? Hmm. I don't remember my um, constants all that well. Let's take a look at my table of uh, standard resistor values here. 270. Well, 280 isn't common, but 270 certainly is. So make that 270 kilo ohms. Now we can work out what is this actually going to give us. Um, the 560 kilo ohms times 10 nanofarads is 5.6 milliseconds. Multiply by that by 2 pi and invert it. So we're going to get a corner frequency of 28.42 hertz. Not too bad for trying to get 30. And then the gain is going to be 560 kilo ohms divided by 270 kilo ohms is um, a passband gain of 2. I didn't want 270. I wanted 200. So let's, uh, I wanted a gain of 200, not of 2. So let's change that to 2.7 kilo ohms. Okay, so 560 divided by 2.7 kilo ohms is going to be a gain of 207.4. That's in the pass band, so at very low frequencies. All right, um, now it might be useful to plot this thing with GNU plot. So let's switch over to GNU plot here. That's not GNU plot, that's my looking up the table. Let's uh, hide that and get a window here I can do GNU plot in. All right, starting GNU plot. Uh, first thing to do is load definitions, not GNU plot. That'll get me all this standard definitions of uh, capacitance and resistance and set up my grid and all the, those other nice things. Need a gain equation. Here I'm going to define the gain for frequency f, parameters ri, rf, cf. I'm going to have a negative of the 
impedance of the parallel RF and CF, where well, CF is a capacitor, so it's ZC of FCF, and then divide that by the input impedance RI. So that's the gain. Um, now, this was going to have to go to very low frequencies, and I think the default frequencies in definition like GNU plot didn't go low enough. So let's set the X range to 0.1 hertz to um, 10E4 is a kind of weird number. Let's make that 10E3. It's 10 kilohertz. All right, and now we just need to plot the absolute value of the gain with... Um, here I've got one, I don't want one kilo ohm, I said 2.7 kilo ohms. 2.7 kilo ohms, uh, 560 kilo ohms, and 10 nanofarads. We plot the absolute value of the gain, and that should um, pop up a GNU plot window here. And we can see that the gain here is very close to the 200. It is, in fact, 207 as we go to a low enough value here. And it drops one decade per decade that we expected. And the corner frequency is right around 30 hertz, probably the 28 hertz that uh, we calculated it should be. So this filter does seem to do what we wanted it to do. And as you can see, the design of this filter is no more difficult than the design of a passive filter. Uh, but you have one more free parameter that allows you to set a gain to be something other than one as the passband gain. And that's one of the big advantages of having um, an active filter is that you can get gain out of it.